Today, we're going to be talking about Google's answer to OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google Bard. Now, what exactly is Google Bard? Well, it's pretty much the same thing as ChatGPT, except designed by Google. In theory, it can do everything that ChatGPT can do. And that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to put both ChatGPT and Google Bard in a head to head match to see which one's better for your dropshipping business. We're going to go ahead and ask them a few different questions regarding the dropshipping business, regarding what niches to get into or what products to sell. And we're going to compare the answers from both to see which could be better to use in our dropshipping business. Now, make sure you stick around all the way to the end, because one of these two tools really has the capabilities to make your dropshipping business that much easier. Which one? Stick around and find out. Let's run that intro and let's get started. What's going on, everyone? Mario here with AutoDS. And if you like informative videos in the dropshipping business and staying up to date with all things dropshipping, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. So as mentioned earlier today, we're going to be comparing Google Bard and ChatGPT. Now, if you don't know what ChatGPT is, then do me a favor and get from under that rock that you've been living in and just watch this video really quick. In it, you're going to find all of the information you need to be able to start using ChatGPT for your dropshipping business and being able to use all of its different features to be able to streamline your own business. Now over 160,000 people have actually watched that video and found it to be helpful and informative. So if you don't know exactly what ChatGPT is, just go ahead and watch the video first so that way you can be up to date. Now to go along with this video, I do have a cheat sheet with all of the different questions I'm going to ask both ChatGPT and Google Bard. So if you want access to that, all you have to do is go ahead and comment down below hashtag Bard versus GPT along with which one you like the most. Do you like ChatGPT or do you like Google Bard better? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll answer back with the cheat sheet link. So I already have a set number of questions that I'm going to ask both Google Bard as well as ChatGPT. And I'm going to be comparing both of the answers to see which one is more generic or which one sounds better, which one's a bit more creative. And I'm also going to compare how fast they both spit out their answers. So is ChatGPT going to be faster or is Google Bard going to be faster? Well, let's go ahead and find out and let's get started. So as you can see, we have both Google Bard as well as ChatGPT opened up on my computer screen. And if you want the links to both, ChatGPT is going to be chat.openai.com while Google Bard is going to be bard.google.com. Now, as of the recording of this video, you do have to sign up for a wait list for Google Bard. So if you want to try it out, just go to the Google Bard website and type in your email so that way you can be added to the waiting list. I got accepted in about three or four days, so it really shouldn't take too long. So if you do want access and you don't mind waiting a little bit, just go ahead and go to the Google Bard website and sign up. Also, remember that these links, including all of the different things that I'm going to ask both AIs are going to be in the cheat sheet. So just make sure to comment down below for that. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and start asking some questions. Now, I already have the first question copied. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste it to both ChatGPT and Google Bard. Let's go ahead and see how fast they both answer and what they answer. So the first one is going to be what niches are good to sell. And I'm going to send that over to ChatGPT and do the same for Google Bard. So ChatGPT is already starting to spit out its answers while Google Bard is currently thinking and is actually done. So right off the bat, we can see that Google Bard is actually faster. ChatGPT takes the time and starts writing everything down as it's compiling its answers, while Google Bard just flat out gives you all of its answers. All right. So these are all the answers that they gave us. Let's go ahead and go over maybe just the first three of them so we don't waste too much time and quickly skim through the rest and see how they are. So to start, ChatGPT says the answer to this question can depend on various factors such as your interest, skills, market trends and demand. However, here are some niches that tend to have consistent demand and can be profitable. All right. So to start, it's giving us health and wellness, beauty and personal care and technology and gadgets. Let's see what it has to say about the first one. This niche includes products related to fitness, nutrition and mental health. With people being more health conscious, there is a growing demand for products that promote a healthy lifestyle. All right. So it's a pretty generic description on the niche itself. And I also gave us a few other options for niches, all pretty good, but pretty generic. Now let's see what Google Bard has to say. So Google Bard says there are many different niches that are good to sell, but the best niche for you will depend on your interests, expertise and target market. All right. So just in that intro header, you can tell that both ChatGPT and Google Bard are pretty similar when it comes to that part. Ultimately, they're saying that there's quite a few good niches that there are. It really is all going to depend on current trends, the current market, maybe what season you're in, what holidays are coming up, just a bunch of different factors that can factor into the popularity of all of these niches. But these are some generic niches that can do pretty well year round. Now, a few of the ones that Google Bard is offering is pet products, home decor, fashion, beauty and health and wellness, along with some of the rest, which again are pretty generic, pretty good niches, but pretty generic, which is kind of what we were looking for. We weren't really looking for specifics. Now, a really good way to be able to test some of these niches to see if maybe there's going to be an uptrend in them pretty soon. Maybe it's worth the time to start making a store based around some of these niches is by using Google Trends. So it's pretty 
easy to do that. Let's go ahead and take one of the suggestions that Google Bard gave us, for example. So let's try and go for health and wellness. All right, let's go ahead and copy health and wellness. And then we're going to run over to Google Trends. Once we're in Google Trends, we're going to go ahead and paste in the niche that we want to search for. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in health and wellness. And by default, the search interest here is going to be for the past day. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to the past five years. So from here, let's switch it to five years. And now we can see where there's going to be some specific spikes, which could be some good times to be able to start offering this particular niche or products within this niche. So as you can see here, between December 23rd to December 29th, it starts uptaking all the way up until about January 12th. Then it stays fairly steady, starts going down a little bit, but then you see another pretty massive spike once again the following year, right before Christmas to right after Christmas. So December 22nd to December 28th, spiking all the way to the top of about, let's see right here about the end of January. Now, just to see if this is a recurring trend, that's already two years in a row. Let's pick one of these other spikes. So here, December 19th to December 25th, once again, you see a pretty big spike all the way to about the beginning of January. So this is pretty much telling us that towards the end of December, beginning of January, that's some pretty good prime time to start selling some health and wellness equipment, some supplements, or maybe some products, whatever it is that you wanna base your dropshipping store around, as long as it's in the health and wellness niche, it should do fairly well, according to the data that we're seeing on Google trends. A lot of things obviously factor into that as well, such as having high quality products, a high quality website, doing your marketing correctly and advertising to the right demographic. All this stuff adds up. But if you have all of this stuff in order, along with the perfect timing, let's say catching one of those spikes as soon as they start, chances are you're going to make some sales and you're going to make some money. But always remember to test different products, test different marketing strategies and keep going if one particular product or niche just doesn't do well. All right. So up next, we're going to ask it another question, but we're going to get a bit more specific. Let's go ahead and start with ChatGPT since we already know that ChatGPT is going to take a little bit longer to spit out its response. We're going to ask what niches are good to sell with Christmas in a few months. This should be pretty interesting because it should start to give us some more Christmassy or some more holiday specific niches. So let's go ahead and send it off to ChatGPT and Google Bard. All right, so Google Bard is done and ChatGPT is still typing. Let's see what they came up with. All right, so to start, ChatGPT gave us gift items, Christmas decorations, food and beverages, clothing and accessories, and home goods. Some of these can be used as Christmas decorations, while others can be done as presents or things to fill up things like goodie bags or stockings. So as far as gift items, it says people are always looking for unique and thoughtful gifts to give their loved ones during Christmas. Products such as personalized items, toys, electronics, jewelry tend to be popular during the time. So it's pretty much just telling us generic gifts. You know, if you have kids, give them toys. If you have a significant other, maybe some jewelry, stuff like that. Christmas decorations. People are definitely going to be lighting up their house for Christmas. People love decorating for Christmas and the holidays. So Christmas decorations decorations could be a pretty popping trend for that time. Then comes food and beverages. Food and beverages are an essential part of the holiday season and people are always looking for unique and festive treats to serve during Christmas. That's 100% true. There's tons of food and drink that are specific for Christmas. You have things like eggnog, Christmas cookies, Christmas specific, pretty much anything when it comes to baked goods. So food and drinks are definitely something that you want to be looking at during the Christmas season to be able to sell. Now, can you drop ship it? Maybe, but we actually didn't specify drop shipping. So let's go ahead and switch it up a little bit and specify for dropshipping. So I went ahead and actually made the change. So I added popular for dropshipping during Christmas and it gave me pretty much the same suggestions. Uh, everything's fairly generic and it still included food and beverages. Do I think that food and beverages are a great item to dropship? Probably not, especially since sometimes can take a long time in transit. So food and beverages, perishables, I would stay away from. So aside from that, we also have Christmas decorations. We said those are great gift items specific for who you're going to be giving it to. Electronics are also going to be super hot during the holidays. Everyone wants a new game system, a new video game, a new TV. Everyone loves electronics. So electronics are obviously an integral part of the holiday season, which would make it a great niche to dropship. All right. So now let's see what Google Bard is telling us would be good niches to dropship with Christmas in a few months. So for one, it's telling us Christmas decorations, just like ChatGPT. So got some similar answers there. Christmas gifts, food, Christmas experiences. That's interesting. Christmas is a time for spending time with loved ones, and there's always a demand for Christmas experiences. This includes items such as Christmas concerts, plays, and parades. That is not eligible to be dropshipped. You can't really dropship experiences. You can't dropship a concert or concert tickets. So that's an X for Google Bard on that one. Uh, that's not a good suggestion. Christmas services. Christmas is a time for giving back and there's always a demand for Christmas services. This includes items such as Christmas caroling, volunteering, soup kitchens, and donating to charities. Once again, that's also another X for Google Bard. You can't really dropship Christmas services. So did we specify what niches are good to dropship with Christmas in a few months? Yes. So this is something that Google Bard actually suggested for us specifically for dropshipping. Now, when choosing a niche to dropship for Christmas, 
business, it's important to consider the following factors. So Google Bard is actually giving us a bit more tips as well as the suggestions that we asked for. So it's telling us to choose a niche based on demand, competition, profitability, and timeline. You should have enough time to market and sell your products or services before Christmas. That's a very good tip. A lot of people tend to start their dropshipping business for Christmas products, let's say one or two months before Christmas. A lot of the times that's not enough time. You're going to need a little bit longer than that to be able to make sure you have effective marketing and to make sure that your customers can receive their products on time. You know, a lot of times for dropshipping, shipping can take a little bit longer than we would want it to. So just always plan ahead and make sure you have enough time for all of that. So that's actually a plus one for Google because they're giving us some pretty good tips to be able to plan ahead. And Google Bard actually just keeps going with the tips. They're actually trying to be super helpful. So, so it's also telling us to consider the following factors when dropshipping for Christmas, your shipping, your customer service, and your returns. Be prepared to handle returns and exchanges during the holiday season or after. And then it continues with more tips saying, here's some tips for dropshipping Christmas products. So start early, choose the right products, find reliable suppliers, set up your store, market your store, and provide excellent customer service. So Google Bard actually provided us with a lot more information than we even asked it for in the first place. While it's suggestions for what we actually asked for, best niches to dropship for Christmas, were okay. It didn't give us a ton of niches and two of the niches were actually pretty much not drop shippable, if that's even a word. So pretty much just not eligible to be drop shipped because they were services and experiences. Can't really drop ship those. It did pretty good and stepped up by giving us the different suggestions on how to prepare for the holiday season and how to prepare for the drop shipping of Christmas products. Now, ChatGPT actually didn't give us all that extra information, but it gave us some straight to the point niches and it gave us the information exactly as we asked it for. We asked for the top niches to drop ship for Christmas and that's exactly what ChatGPT gave us. Now, I kind of want to step up the question a little bit and give it something a bit more recent and something that's currently going on and see what it gives us. So let's ask them what niches are actually currently trending. So this is going to prompt some pretty interesting answers. So we asked Google Bard and ChatGPT what the current trending niches are. And the answers it gave us are pretty generic and kind of the same as the first ones that it gave us when we asked them what niches are good to sell. And Google Bard gave us health and wellness, personal development, sustainability, which sustainability, I mean, I guess it could be a niche you know, sustainable clothing, let's say tech, gaming, food and fashion, while ChatGPT gave us less options, but pretty similar. So sustainable and eco friendly products, health and wellness, technology and gadgets, personalized and customized products. So these are all fairly generic options. But there is one thing to note. If you see what ChatGPT is saying, ChatGPT says as an AI language model, I don't have real time access to current market data or trends. So remember, one really important thing to keep in mind, ChatGPT's data is limited up to 2021. So anything that happened after 2021, ChatGPT is going to have no knowledge about. Whereas Google Bard, Google Bard actually has current data in it. So you can ask it certain current events and it can respond with the proper answers. Now, when it comes to asking it for niches, it, it, it's a bit generic. The question itself is a bit generic for both ChatGPT as well as Google Bard. But I wanted to see if it gave me maybe some currently trending niches that could be a bit unique. Let's say maybe anime, right? People love anime. There's a huge boom in it. And I was expecting to see something a bit specific like that. It gave us a bit more generic answers, which is OK. So let's go ahead and on to the next question. Now let's get a bit more specific niches and actually start talking about products. So let's see what Google Bard and ChatGPT have to say about products. Now, before we do get started with that, I do want to mention that I have a product research spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is made to help you actually choose the best products that are right for your dropshipping store. So if we look on over it, you're going to see that here you can type the type of product that it is. So type the name of the product and type your link. So you always have the reference to it. Then you're going to be asked a couple of questions. So are you passionate about the product? Is it hard to find in stores? Is it hard to guess the price? Is it safe to sell? And a few other things. So if you're able to answer yes to all of these questions, then that means that this particular product is good to add to your dropshipping store and it's worth a shot. It's worth to test it and see if it sells. So if you want access to that, just go ahead and comment down below that you want access to the product research spreadsheet and I'll go ahead and leave you a link. So now we're going to ask actually which products are good to sell, but we're not going to be specific about it. We're just going to ask what products are good to sell. Let's go ahead and see what it says, which products are good to actually let's change that, which products are good to drop ship. And let's go ahead and add that as on Google Bard as well. Let's send them off and let's see what they say. All right. So we got our answers back and chat GPT is telling us when it comes to drop shipping, it's important to choose products that are high in demand, which is true. So it's telling us clothing and accessories. That's actually a niche, not as much as a product, but I mean, I guess you can go by product. But when I ask for products, I'm trying to be a bit more specific. So if you're going for clothing and accessories. I want to know if you want me to sell high top shoes, maybe some cargo shorts or button down shirts, beauty and personal
personal care, electronics, home goods, and pet supplies. So ChatGPT gave us niches to sell. It didn't necessarily give us products. So now let's see what Google Bard has to say. And Google Bard is telling us there are many different products that are good to dropship, but the best products for you will depend on your interests, expertise, and target market. So it's pretty much telling us the same thing that it told us within the first question. It's all dependent on current trends, what's currently going on. So it's telling us to keep in mind demand, competition, profitability, shipping, and customer service. But then it actually gives us a few examples that are good to dropship. So it's telling us to dropship clothing, accessories, electronics, home goods, toys and games, and sports and outdoors. Once again, niches, not necessarily products. So now let's get a bit more specific with the products and actually ask it for the best products to dropship within a specified niche. So I'm going to ask both ChatGPT and Google Bard what products are good to sell for toys and games. Perfect. So we got our answers back and ChatGPT is telling us to sell board games, which is pretty good. Educational toys because parents love educational toys. They love early childhood development and getting what's best for their kids. We also have outdoor games, remote control toys and action figures and dolls. Now Google Bard is telling us the same thing. Action figures, building blocks, dolls, games, puzzles, stuffed animals, toys and trucks and toys for babies. So Google Bard was a bit more specific than ChatGPT was, but overall the suggestions from both AI models were fairly good. While they were somewhat generic, you can't really get too specific when it comes to these things because they're not going to necessarily tell you sell this particular toy or sell this particular piece of clothing. Just remember that these are tools and that's really what they're meant to be. These are tools that you can use and you have at your disposal to be able to come up with different ideas. But then at the end of the day, it's up to you to really fine tune those ideas and just do that extra little bit of research to be able to find the best winning products to be able to add to your dropshipping store. Okay, so we've asked both AI models quite a few questions about some products to sell, some niches to sell. Now, I actually want to know where can I make these purchases? Where does Google Bard or where does ChatGPT think is the best place to be able to source my dropshipping products? So let's go ahead and ask them. So I asked where is the best place to source my dropshipping products from? And we actually got some pretty good answers. So let's check out ChatGPT's responses first. First, we got AliExpress, Oberlo, SaleWho, DHgate, Wholesale Central, Doba, and Spocket. Now let's check out what Google Bard is saying, and they're telling us AliExpress, Alibaba, Spocket, Oberlo, and CJ Dropshipping. ChatGPT and Google Bard actually gave us some pretty similar answers, but they were pretty good. All of the suggestions that they gave us are legitimate suppliers, except for one, which both of them actually gave us, and that's Oberlo. Oberlo, from my understanding, used to be a supplier, but they no longer are. While they still work with dropshippers, they're not really a supplier anymore, so you can't really source products from them. But aside from that, all of the other options that they gave us are pretty good. And as always, Google Bard trying to up chat GPT gives us a few extra suggestions and a few factors to look out for, such as, you know, make sure you have your product selection, make sure you find the right products with good prices, good quality shipping, and you provide good customer service. Now, those are some of the more conventional dropshipping suppliers, but it also missed a few others. So for example, you can also use places like Walmart, you can use Costco, you can even use Etsy. And as of most recently, you can even use AutoDS as a supplier. Let me show you how, because this is actually really cool. So if we head on over to our platform over at platform.autods.com and you click on over to the marketplace, you're going to see all of these different items that you can add to your dropshipping store, right? Now there's something new here. So if you look at the top right, you're going to see suppliers. Click on that and now you're gonna see AutoDS suppliers. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now, once the page loads up, you're gonna see all of these new products that say AutoDS supplier discounted prices. And on top of that, you're also gonna see that the shipping time is fairly quick. It's typically between six to nine business days. And that's from the time that the customer places the order. So your customer places the order, six to nine business days after, that order is gonna be at their front door. Now this all comes from the AutoDS warehouse. So we actually have a warehouse now where we have all of these readily available products that can ship directly directly to your customer without having to wait three or four weeks for shipping. Now to make things even easier, let's say you're scrolling through the products list and you find something you like, let's say these life vests, all you have to do is click on import draft and it's going to go to your drafts page. From there, all you have to do is go ahead and click on over to the drafts page and you're going to see the product that you just imported. All you have to do now is click to edit and here you can update everything that you need on the product listing before making it go live on your website. So you can change the title, you can add it to any collections that you want, you can add any custom tags to it so that way you can keep track of 
the different metrics so you can keep track of different sales, what variations have been selling. You also have the option to change the shipping method. If you click on over, you can change the description, change the different variants. You can add, edit or delete any images. And once you're done with all that, you can either click on save to keep it in your draft or save an import and it'll be live in your store within minutes. Now, that's just an added bonus I wanted to throw in there for all of you. AutoDS now has their own warehouse. So if you want some high quality products with some pretty quick shipping, make sure you check out the platform over at platform.autodes.com. Remember that we have the free trial going on for just $1. So you make sure you check it out and start adding these products to your store. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Now let's check out product titles. Let's see how Google Bard stands up to ChatGPT with product titles. So I'm looking at one of the prior answers where we asked some of the good products to dropship. And I'm looking at accessories, specifically jewelry and jewelry bags. So I'm going to see if I can get a good product title for a jewelry bag that's made out of suede and is super soft. So give me some good product titles for a jewelry bag that is made out of suede and it's super soft. So let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it. And let's see what suggestions Google Bard gives us. So let's start off with ChatGPT. Soft suede jewelry bag for safe storage and travel. It's not bad. Luxurious suede jewelry pouch for precious gems. Soft and stylish suede jewelry organizer for traveling and home use. Soft touch suede jewelry pouch for keeping your accessories safe and sound. Suede drawstring pouch for storing your favorite jewelry pieces. All right, those were just a few of them. Um, They sound pretty good. They're pretty generic and straight to the point. Now let's see what Google Bard is saying. Suede jewelry bag, super soft and luxurious. Suede jewelry roll, soft and protective. Suede jewelry pouch, soft and stylish. Suede jewelry case, soft and durable. Suede jewelry organizer, soft and convenient. So right off the bat, you can tell that Google Bard actually stuck to one particular formula, and that is the actual item followed by a quick description. It did that for all of the different options that it gave us. While ChatGPT actually gave us some more unique answers in a bit varied fashion. So ChatGPT actually mixed together all of the different product title keywords and gave us a pretty good mix of different product titles, while Google Bard just stuck to that one particular formula and kept it fairly generic. So as far as product titles, I have to give it to ChatGPT. I like the variation it gave us and the creativity to it. I feel that Google Bard was a bit more generic and just a bit more bland. I didn't like the variations because it really didn't give us many. So next up, I did the exact same question, except instead of a product title, I'm asking for a product description. Now, ChatGPT gave us quite a few different options. Uh, we're only going to read three of them and compare them to Google Bard, which gave us a lot less. So to start with ChatGPT, protect your precious jewelry with our luxurious suede jewelry bag. Made from super soft suede, this bag will keep your jewelry safe and scratch free, whether you're at home or on the go. That's really good. Very clean, very descriptive. I like it a lot. Keep your jewelry organized and in perfect condition with our soft and stylish suede jewelry pouch. The gentle texture of the suede fabric ensures your jewelry stays in place, so you never have to worry about tangles or scratches. Once again, that one's pretty good, pretty clean, detailed. It really gives me a, as I'm reading it, it's actually giving me like a visual representation in my mind. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's really good. And the third one, our suede drawstring jewelry bag is perfect for storing your favorite jewelry pieces. Made from soft and durable suede fabric, this bag is gentle on your jewelry and will keep it safe and secure. So those three were pretty good. They were pretty descriptive for the length that they were, which they weren't that long. So ChatGPT gave us some pretty good product descriptions. Now let's see what Google Bard has to say. So suede jewelry bag, the softest, most luxurious way to store your jewelry. Interesting. All right. This luxurious suede jewelry bag is the perfect way to store your most precious jewelry. Made from the finest suede, the bag is soft and luxurious to the touch. It features a spacious interior with plenty of room for all of your jewelry, and it comes with a removable velvet jewelry tray to keep your pieces organized. The bag also has a convenient carrying handle so you can take it with you wherever you go. Now, that was a very good description. It was very descriptive. It was long than what ChatGPT gave us and it was good. Honestly, between ChatGPT and Google Bard, just with this one that it gave us, I want to say it's a tie. It's pretty good. One is a bit more descriptive while the other one's shorter, but they were both straight to the point and they did very well. So let's check out the second one. Suede jewelry roll. Keep your jewelry safe and secure on the go. This suede jewelry roll is the perfect way to keep your jewelry safe and secure on the go. Made from soft, durable suede, this roll features a variety of compartments to keep your jewelry organized. It also comes with drawstring closure to keep your jewelry safe and secure. So 
once again, pretty good, descriptive, straight to the point, and it even gave you a couple of extra features. So that's one thing that I noticed Google Bard has been doing. It adds a couple of features on its own. So let's say in the first one, it's saying that it has a convenient carrying handle. Uh, probably doesn't. If it's just a regular bag, it might not have a handle. It might be something you just hold on to. Obviously, there's different variations, but we didn't specify that it has a handle. This is just something that it's adding. Same thing with the second description. It's saying that it has multiple compartments. While we didn't specify it has multiple compartments, we just said it was a bag. It still added that anyway. So these are a few things to look out for. Don't just copy and paste these descriptions if you decide to use one of these. Always read them and make sure you have the most accurate information possible. ChatGPT didn't necessarily do that, but it did add that it had a drawstring to it. But a drawstring is kind of a universal feature amongst these kinds of bags. So it, it, it's kind of normal or expected that it would add it. Google Bard did the same thing. So that's not too bad. I don't mind that part of it. All right. So we have products, product niches, product suppliers, product titles, and product descriptions. Now, where do these AI bots think would be the best place to start marketing or what would be the best form of marketing for our dropshipping businesses? Let's once again, ask and find out. So for marketing, I'm actually asking them how I should market my dropshipping business based around health and wellness. And this is what ChatGPT has to say about it. So it's telling me to know my target audience. Before I start marketing my business, I need to know who the target audience is. Am I targeting fitness enthusiasts, health conscious individuals, or people interested in natural remedies? The second option it's giving us is create engaging content, use influencers, offer discounts and promotions, build an email list, partner with complementary businesses, which means partner with other businesses in the health and wellness space to cross promote your products. It's a pretty good one and focus on customer service. Now, those are some pretty good ways to market your business. Let's see what Google Bard has to say about it. So how should I market my dropshipping business for health and wellness, Google Bard? First off, you should choose the right products. Yes, we should choose the right products, but that's not necessarily a way to market. Create a strong online presence, all right? Your website is the most important marketing tools you have, so make sure it's well-designed and easy to use, okay? Use social media, all right? Run ads, paid advertising, that's great. Get involved in health and wellness community, that's pretty good. Attend health and wellness events, right? articles for health and wellness blogs and connect with other people in the health and wellness industry. This will help you build relationships with potential customers and promote your business. That's pretty good. So even if you're not active in these spaces physically, you can just do what they're saying and you can write a blog. So that's actually a pretty good way to market and offer excellent customer service. Great. So those are the different ways that ChatGPT and Google Bard are telling us to market our dropshipping store based around health and wellness. Now, from these, I would have to say the actual ways to market would be create engaging content. So content marketing, you know, post on TikTok, make some pretty good posts on Instagram, maybe on your Facebook posts or Facebook groups. You also have using influencers. So you have influencer marketing, which is very important. Offer discounts and promotions. You can do that using an email list. So you build your email list and then you send out different emails with promotions, different discounts to bring in some more customers. Partner with complementary businesses. So if you can partner up with businesses specifically that are bigger than you or even around the same size as you, that gives you exposure to more people in the particular sector or more people in that particular niche and focus on customer service, which we all know is one of the most important things. Always offer the best customer service. Now on Google Bard's part, choose the right products. Again, that's not necessarily a marketing technique, so you can't really use that to market. Create a strong online presence that can go a few different ways. You can have a strong line social media presence, which does help with the marketing. And so does having a good platform, like a good website that, that could also help. But I don't really see it as much of a marketing technique per se or a way to market your business. Use social media, definitely hands down, use social media, influencer marketing, run ads, Facebook ads, pay-per-click ads, get involved in the health and wellness community, which again is pretty good, write a blog and offer excellent customer service, of course. So as far as marketing, they both had some pretty good suggestions. I would have to say that ChatGPT probably had some better ones, but Google Bard actually had a very good point with getting involved in the community in terms of, you know, starting a blog, something you can do online. All right, so one of the last things I'm actually gonna ask it is probably one of the more important questions out there. And that is, how can I scale my dropshipping business? I really want to know what artificial intelligence thinks about the ability to scale your business and what it thinks would be the best way or the best approach to start scaling and start making some more money. So I already asked them. Let's go ahead and check out the different answers. So to start ChatGPT and ChatGPT is telling us in order to be able to start scaling your dropshipping business, one of the things that you can do is expand your product line. And that is 100% true. The more products you 
you offer, the more chances you have of having a sale. Just make sure that they're quality products. And if you need help finding some top quality products to sell, then you can always check out the winning product section over at platform.audits.com. Here you can find tons of winning products that are proven bestsellers that are currently trending and have been bestsellers in the past. Aside from that, if you like any of these products in particular, let's say this rug right here, you can go ahead and click on it and you're going to get tons of information to help you start selling and marketing the product itself. Aside from that, if you're on, let's say AliExpress and you're checking out a product, you can also scroll all the way down. And then once you scroll down, you're going to see seller recommendations. These are all products that the seller recommends because they have confidence that these are going to be best sellers or they have been best sellers in the past. And considering your recent searches, these are probably something that you're going to like or are going to do well in your dropshipping store. Aside from that, you also have AliExpress Dropship Center, where here you can change all of the different filters to find products that are right for you and your niche. These products are also proven to sell and have had success in the past. All right. So continuing on with ChatGPT is just as a scale, optimize your website for conversions, invest in paid advertising, automate your processes, build partnerships, leverage social media, focus on customer retention. Now let's check out in detail some of these examples and see what they say. So optimize your website for conversions. Make sure your website is optimized for conversions by improving the user experience, simplifying the checkout process and incorporating customer reviews and testimonials. That is extremely important. You should always have customer reviews and testimonials either on your products page or on your homepage or your landing page because that helps build trust in your customer. The more trust they have, the more comfortable they feel actually making a purchase from your store. Now automate your processes. Automating your processes can help you save time and increase efficiency. Consider using automation tools for tasks such as order fulfillment, inventory management, and customer service. Now, it's funny that ChatGPT says that because we can do that directly with AutoDS. So as you saw earlier, you can import products to your store directly from the AutoDS dashboard. So you can go ahead and find the product that's perfect for your store, and you can simply just click import draft and it'll be imported to your draft section so you can make any necessary adjustments. But not only that, you can also import different products that you want outside of AutoDS. So let's take, for example, this laser hair removal, right? All I have to do is go ahead and copy the link or cut it in this case and go back to my seller dashboard and just click on add products. Here I can click on single product or multiple products. So since I only have one, I'm going to do single product. And right here, all I'm going to do is paste in the URL. Once that's done, you can see that the supplier source is going to change from whatever it was previously to the one specified by the URL itself. So in this case, it's going to be AliExpress and it's going to be shipping from China. Now from here, I can click on edit now or publish the store. If I click on edit now, it'll take it to my drafts page and it'll take me along with it so I can make any necessary adjustments. If I click on publish the store, it's going to go live on my store, ready to sell within a couple of minutes. Aside from that, we also have the automatic orders. So here you can see under the orders tab, the status of all of the orders that have been placed on your dropshipping store. So here you can see what products have been ordered from your store, which ones have already been ordered from your supplier and which ones are in transit to your customer already, as well as which ones have already been delivered. Not only that, but you can also automate the entire order fulfillment process. So if a customer places an order on your store, you can automate the process in which the order gets placed from your supplier. So instead of you having to go to your supplier's website, AutoDS will do it all for you. Using that, there's two different options. You can go with either automatic orders where AutoDS is going to use your buyer accounts. So it's going to log into, let's say, AliExpress on your behalf using your login credentials. And it's going to make the purchase once again on your behalf using your credit card or your payment details. The other option is fulfilled by AutoDS, where instead of using your buyer accounts, AutoDS is going to use the actual AutoDS buyer accounts. So it's going to be making the purchase on your behalf through the AutoDS account. And on top of that, instead of using, let's say, your banking details or your credit card details to make the purchase, it's going to use a loaded balance that you have to be able to make the different purchases. Now, if you do want more details about that, about automation or anything that I'm actually talking about in this video, remember that I do have that cheat sheet that's available to all of you for completely free. All you have to do is comment down below hashtag Bard versus GBT, along with which one of these you find find most useful, which one you like the best, Google Bard or ChatGPT. And we're going to reply back with a link to the cheat sheet. So continuing on to Google Bard, let's see what they have to say about scaling our dropshipping business. So Google Bard is telling us to invest in marketing. All right. Expand our product line, which is fairly similar or exactly the same as what ChatGPT told us. Partner with other businesses, automate your business, hire employees, outsource your tasks, invest in technology and be patient. So that last one, be patient, I actually find extremely helpful and probably one of the more relevant ones. I can't stress enough that you need to be patient. A lot of these things aren't necessarily going to happen overnight. While it is possible to find overnight success, it's highly unlikely. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. There's a lot of product research. There's a lot of testing, different marketing strategies and seeing what products work for you and your business. Don't be discouraged. Stay in that hustle mindset and just keep going. Now, going into a bit of detail on one of these options that Google Bard gave us, 
that actually stood out to me as well is hiring employees. While we can't necessarily hire employees directly since you know we are dropshipping and everything is remote, we're pretty much running these businesses by ourselves. You can always hire a virtual assistant. Hiring a virtual assistant is extremely helpful because they can really take a lot of work off of your back. So instead of you having to go to ChatGPT and coming up with all of these different product descriptions and product titles, you can outsource that to a virtual assistant and they can get it done for you, saving you quite a bit of time. Time that ultimately you can either reinvest into your business to continue scaling or time that you can just take to yourself and just relax, maybe spend some much needed quality time with the family, whatever you need to do. Ultimately, that's a bit of extra time that you're going to be saving. So the ultimate question, ChatGPT or Google Bard, which one's better? Which one should you choose to use for your dropshipping business? Well, there's not really a clear cut answer. It's really personal preference. It depends on what you like the most and what could work better for your business. So for one, some people might like the creativity from ChatGPT. Personally, I find the answers from ChatGPT to be a bit more creative and probably have a bit more depth than the ones that Google Bard has. Google Bard to me is a bit more generic, but then again, Google Bard is also still learning. So since Google Bard is still pretty much in its infancy, it, there's still a waiting list for it. It's not open to everybody. It's still constantly learning and constantly being updated. Now, there's a key difference between the two when it comes to knowledge, right? ChatGPT has its limited data up to 2021, whereas Google Bard, you can actually ask it some pretty recent events and it'll answer correctly. Really, it's all about using both AIs and seeing which one works best for you. See which one you find easier to work with and which one you find asking questions to easier. Now, that might sound like a pretty strange statement, but the way that you ask your questions to these AI models could really cause a difference in the responses that they give you. So try asking different questions. Try asking the same questions, but in different ways. Try being a bit more or a bit less specific and see ultimately what works best for you and which one you find most responsive and which one you like the most. But if I had to choose, I would say when it comes to product titles, I like ChatGPT. I like the product titles that ChatGPT gave me. But when it came to the actual product descriptions, while ChatGPT did have some good ones, I think that Google Bard had some that were just a bit better. Now comparing the other answers, let's say the niches or the products to sell, or even the ways to market your products and scale, they were all fairly similar. The answers that we received from ChatGPT and Google Bard were pretty similar to each other. They had some minor differences. So honestly, you can't go wrong with either. Try both, see which one works best for you. Let me know down in the comments below which one you actually like the most. Did you like Google Bard? Did you like ChatGPT? Have you been actually able to use Google Bard? If you have, let me know down in the comments below because I really do want to know all of your opinions on these different AI models. Also, are there any new AI models that you've heard of that you think we should check out, test them out, put them up against each other and see how they do? Once again, let me know down in the comments below. Last but not least, remember once again that we still have that cheat sheet available for you. It's completely free and it covers everything that we covered in this video. For access to that, all you have to do is comment down below, hashtag Bard versus GPT, along with which one of these AI models you like the best, and we'll reply back with a link to the sheet. Huge thank you to everyone for watching. Once again, my name is Mario with AutoDS, bringing you all of the latest information in the dropshipping business. And if you don't want to miss out on any future content, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as ring that little bell notification. Huge thank you to all of you for being here with me today, and I'll catch you all next time.